Good morning, everyone. I am Jordan Smith with Voight Smith Innovation, and I hope all of you are doing well and have returned to some kind of normal or new normal in recent weeks. Today, we are going to talk about calibration and application of liquids to get the most accurate, consistent, and efficient results. We have been using almost exclusively liquids in our commercial snow and ice operation since 2010, and we've learned a few things along the way. One of the best parts about liquids is the precision and accuracy they can be applied with even with operators who do not have extensive experience applying de-icers. This is because liquids are much easier and more consistent to track, meter, and calibrate around than granular products are. Liquid is a very consistent medium where bulk granular de-icing products are not due to variance in gradation, which is the granule size, moisture content, temperature, humidity rate, compaction rate, all kinds of different things. All of these factors and more will affect your application rate, even if your spreader settings remain consistent. Experienced operators can sometimes adjust for these variables, but experienced operators are hard to come by, and we all know that banking your efficiency and quality control uh, on any individual employee can be very risky. A system is always best, and using liquids allows you a very simple and consistent system to accurate application. A calibrated liquid spray system can lower operator and experience risk of over and under application of a product by as much as 90%. Four years ago, in our snow and ice operation, we ran five de-icing trucks with automatic speed rate control and one de-icing truck with manual calibration, which is on and off only. Uh, the results over one average Minnesota winter were stunning. Operators were rotated a few times to help create more consistent results, and over application of product for the course of the season was almost 30%. Maybe that doesn't sound like much, but what if all six spray trucks over applied by 30%? For us, four years ago, that would have meant an extra 60,000 gallons of brine and additive would have been wasted over the course of the season, not to mention the unnecessary environmental impact, the wasted labor hours, refill time, and so forth, uh, the cost of which would have paid for the six spray units to have automatic rate control three times over. It is a little bit expensive up front? It can be. But even in lesser snow climates, automatic rate control will almost always pay for itself in less than one season. But that ends my rant, and now on to the rest of the presentation. So now taking a look at some of the components in an automatic rate control system up close. Zooming into the sprayer here. Back there, the green thing, can hardly see it, um, is the flow meter. That's what measures the flow rate that's passing through the system. Obviously, this one is black, but basically what it looks like. It is a magnetic flow meter, so there's no moving turbine or parts inside. It uses a magnetic resistance reading between a top and a bottom magnet to calculate how much is flowing through it. That then sends a signal to the in-cab controller or the smartphone application, and it tells this proportioning valve to open or close to increase or decrease flow rate. Basically, it's a proportional ball valve. If you want to see one up close, um, that's what it looks like. It's closed right now. Actually, it is partially open. So it's got like a, instead of a conventional just round opening hole like the uh, boom section valves have, this one has a slotted hole. So it's a more, uh, I'd say more consistent and more smooth uh, flow rate opening than just a standard round opening. And then the typical brains of your operation, your controller, in-cab controller is going to look something like this. Uh, this is fairly industry standard, fairly conventional. Um, it has the top three switches for your three boom sections. Uh, this controller is not on, obviously, but you can put in how many gallons per acre you want to apply. You can put it in auto or manual control mode. Uh, and that's what sends everything, all the components we just looked at, the signal to uh, open or close or whatever it needs. Last thing then we didn't really cover is the three boom section valves, three separate solenoid valves. Uh, independently controlled to open or close each individual boom section. There are three primary ways that liquids can be metered and calibrated for application. The easiest and best way is with an automatic speed rate control like the de-icing unit behind me has. This unit uses a GPS speed control puck, a magnetic flow meter, which measures the flow rate passing through the system, and a proportioning valve that actually meters and adjusts the flow of rate of the liquid to match your speed. The controller with built-in programming for rate control acts as the brains of this operation. The controller may conventionally be a controller hardwired into the cab, or it may be a smartphone or tablet application like the system uh, that we're looking at now has. Uh, in these systems, you input key data, and it does the rest. 
On this unit, you simply supply your desired gallons per acre rate and click which boom sections you want to spray from, and it does the rest in real time. As you accelerate, the proportioning valve opens further to allow additional flow to the boom to match your speed. So if your desired application rate is, say, 40 gallons an acre, it is going to adjust your flow rate up or down as your speed increases or decreases to apply that consistent 40 gallons per acre. This is regardless of your speed of travel or fluctuations in your speed of travel. How does this work? It's a simple mathematical equation inside the control unit or application. The control unit knows how wide each boom section is. The GPS speed sensor sends a signal telling the control unit how fast the truck is traveling in real time. And you've already told the system how many gallons per acre you want to apply. So now gallons per acre equals speed times flow rate gallons per minute times spray width. The system automatically adjusts the flow rate to match the desired application rate with the current speed in real time. Uh, if you come to an abrupt stop, the system quickly closes the proportioning valve and boom section valves to stop flow. If you accelerate quickly and the boom section valves reopen and the proportioning valve rapidly reopens to provide the correct flow rate for the given gallons per acre target in real time speed. Basically, as long as you can drive and turn a switch on, you can apply accurately with the system. Some important things to keep in mind with automatic rate control systems is that your boom must be balanced, which means at a given pressure range, the middle and side spray booms are applying a consistent amount of product per acre. We often see spray booms that are putting out a high flow rate in the middle boom section and just have a single or dual small fan nozzle that covers five to 10 feet off each side, but does not put out requisite volume to match your center boom. This sort of defeats the purpose of automatic rate control. Sure, the center boom section may be calibrated properly, but major under application of the side spray is occurring, so results may be mixed. A simple way to test your boom is that if your side boom sprays five feet wide, set up buckets to catch the side boom liquid, and set up buckets to catch five feet of the center boom. Run the system for one minute, and at the end of that one minute, all 10 of those buckets should have similar amounts of liquid in them. If they don't, your automatic rate control is likely not accurate for all three spray lanes. Uh, this boom here, has two different options uh, for nozzles. We set up this boom with a pre-treat and a post-treat uh, recommended nozzle set. So in the middle, you have this downward facing cam lock, which is your jet nozzles, your conventional, you'll see the lines on the pavement, uh, and then your pre-treat nozzle in the center, which is a wide pattern fan. On the sides, we have a large uh, post-treat nozzle on top and a smaller pre-treat nozzle on the bottom. Now the reason for the different nozzles is not necessarily to help make sure you're applying the right amount of liquid because the automatic rate control is gonna do that for you. Uh, the main thing this is for is that when you're applying a lower application rate, pre-treating, let's say 40 gallons an acre, and you're traveling at five miles an hour, the system doesn't have enough pressure to feed the larger nozzles uh, that are used for post-treating conventionally. So now what's gonna happen is you're only gonna cover a five foot swath instead of 10 feet, which can be frustrating if you're trying to get into parking spots or corners. That's why we set up the boom this way, and people seem to like how quick and easy it is to change uh, from pre-treat to post-treat. Another thing to consider with automatic rate control systems is that if you're using a turbine flow meter or pulse width modulation system, which is what is used for electric hydraulic systems sometimes, you need to adjust for the specific gravity, which is the density of what you're applying. Straight salt brine uh, and an 8020 blend of brine and additive have substantially different density and thus will apply differently if not adjusted for. The nice thing about a magnetic flow meter, like the one on this spray unit, is that they automatically adjust for changes in specific gravity. Again, it's not a major percentage of over or under application with turbine flow meters or with uh, pulse width modulation, but over the course of a season and multiply it by multiple spray units, it does add up and it does make a big difference. So part of the whole calibration discussion here is that you need to make sure whatever components you're using are actually accurately adjusted for what you're spraying. A lot of turbine flow meters come from the factory calibrated for water. Water and salt brine have very different specific gravities and you need to adjust for that when you're setting your system up. In our minds, automatic rate control is the only way to set up your spray system. Again, it does cost a little bit more than the alternatives that I'm about to cover but over the course of even one season, saving on potential over or under application by even as little as 10% will pay for itself in most snow markets. As far as I know, all major manufacturers of liquid spray systems offer GPS or other rate control options. Or you can also build one yourself. Most of these components we looked at today are available online. Uh, rate controllers, flow meters, proportioning valves, you can pretty much get any of them online if you want to. 
Another way to calibrate a spray system is by use of a pressure calibrated system. I do not personally have a lot of experience with this type of system, but the basic premise is you set up your pump, plumbing, and boom nozzles in a configuration that would allow you to vary your system pressure from the cab, and each pressure level in the system corresponds to a set speed and set of application rates. There is quite a bit of math to figure out how to do this, but we will get the SIMA team uh, a spreadsheet to post a link to so you can help figure this math out. Um, and if you need any help sorting out the details, we'd be happy to help. While this method takes a bit more work to get set up, it can work well to get reasonably consistent application rates at different speeds, as long as your operator is diligent to adjust the system pressure for changes in conditions and speed. In our experience though, often the system gets left on the base setting and it does not get adjusted. Thus, you're almost as well off with the next option, which is basically an on-off option. In an on-off option, you will build your plumbing and boom for a consistent flow rate that matches a desired speed. Potentially, you could install a bypass line that is open when pre-treating, lower application rates, and closed when post-treating, higher application rates, but usually you will set the system up for a consistent desired speed, let's say 10 miles an hour. From there, you instruct your operator to run at that speed as consistently as possible. The system is simple, but typically the inaccuracy, of non -precision, the inaccuracy and non-precision of the applications will be quite high. Uh, the nice thing about these systems is they're very inexpensive, very simple, very quick to set up. One major challenge with manual calibrating systems is that utilizing a three-lane spray boom, like we have here, becomes much more difficult. Each individual boom section requires slightly different pressure and volume to properly and accurately apply. Not to mention, a different pressure or volume will be needed when running three boom sections at once versus two at once versus one at a time. Constantly adjusting a pressure gauge in order to accommodate the number of boom sections that are turned on in real time is difficult for any operator. And for these reasons, these manual control calibration systems are often only one boom section or they severely deviate from their calibration when additional boom sections are turned on. For this reason, typically pressure or manually controlled spray systems are only single lane spray width, which is very slow and inefficient for parking lot applications. It can work fine for roadways, highways, um, but like I said, typically in parking lots, you wanna have that control where you can spray three different boom sections at once. Now we're gonna show you a demo of how the spray system and the three lane boom works and how it makes you much more efficient than just running one lane at a time. As you can see, the three-lane boom is incredibly important to making the process of liquid application efficient. Spraying eight to 10 feet at a time can be incredibly slow and frustrating, not just the width of the spray, but the ability to side spray into parking spots, onto sidewalks that run along curb lines, into loading docks, around cars, curb islands, and so forth. The three-lane boom doesn't just make you three times faster, it's more like a factor of five to six times in our experience. The flow rate of the boom is also very important. We see a lot of booms set up with small half to three quarter per gallon per minute nozzles, 
And especially in post treat applications, you just can't get enough volume from these systems to travel at any kind of reasonable speed and achieve the desired results. Open flow systems like this boom allow travel speeds that are faster than what you can reasonably travel in most commercial parking lots. Uh, not that you necessarily want to go faster than you should travel, but the ability to travel as fast as you feel comfortable is a great asset. So to recap, why is a properly set up and calibrated spray system so important? Number one, to reduce or eliminate product waste. While brine is inexpensive, uh, when you start putting in the additives and factor in the extra labor and truck expenses associated with extra hours and miles caused by refilling more often than necessary due to overapplication or due to return trips or callbacks due to underapplication, it's a no-brainer to have your system calibrated properly. The efficiency gained by proper calibration will help save on material waste, but efficiency of labor is also incredibly important. Uh, number two, protecting the environment. Liquids are a great step forward in protecting the environment, so why not apply them at the correct weight rates while you're at it? If you're gonna have liquids, use them correctly, get the best results, do the best for the environment. Uh, you'll get better consistency between operators. You don't need your A team to do a great and consistent job with a properly calibrated system. Uh, and then the last thing is effectiveness of your application. You wanna get the results that you and your customers expect because that's going to retain clients, gain new business, and be all around best for your business. Now that we have our spray system calibrated, let's briefly talk about our application rates. Typically, you'll be looking to put down 40 to 50 gallons per acre for pretreat, which is also known as anti-icing. Most of you now know and understand that the primary purpose behind this application is to prevent the bond of ice and snow with the pavement or asphalt. As a side note, we have seen drastically better and more consistent effects from pretreatments with some additives in them, typically at a 5% add rate, 5% additive, 95% salt brine. We have tested many products, and while most of them perform very well, we strongly suggest a ready-made de-icing additive as opposed to straight mag, cal, or well brine. Well brine. You will get much more consistent results uh, due to a multitude of factors we don't have time to cover today. Typically, you'll be looking at 60 to 120 gallons per acre for post-treatment. This is like inner storm or after the storm. It's a liquid application that sort of is replacing a typical salt application. I know it's kind of a wide range, but remember, when you're putting down liquid, what you're putting down is 75% or more water. So the more moisture that is present on the surface, the higher your application rate needs to be. Uh, lower temps also dictate a higher application rate as you want to ensure the melt-off does not refreeze as it dilutes. A slight leftover plowing can easily be wiped out by a 60 gallon per acre application. Ice or heavy snowpack will require more product to get the job done, pushing you to that 120 gallon per acre range. We would always suggest the use of an additive with your post-treatment applications. Typically, a 5 to 10% add rate is sufficient for most climates, but the biggest thing with these additives is it's going to help prevent that refreeze and flash refreeze that can occur if you're just using straight salt brine or straight calor mag. Some other factors to consider are the frequency of snowfalls in your region. The more often you apply your liquid apps, the more built up content you will have in your substrate, which will give you better residual results. We refer to this as seasoned parking lots, which require substantially less product when post treating than lots that are not seasoned. That's all we have time for for now, but I will be happy to answer any and all of your questions related to this presentation and liquid de-icing in general. Hope to talk to all of you again soon. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.